Good evening, uh, and uh, a very happy Women's Day to all amazing women on earth. I, uh, Dr. Rupa Sen, as the IQAC coordinator, extend a hearty welcome to all dignitaries, guests, friends, colleagues, and dear students on behalf of the entire college for being kind enough to grace the occasion of the inaugural ceremony of a week-long national symposium scheduled from 8th March to 14th March 2021 on gender sensitization and awareness organized by the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Department of Sociology and Women's Studies in collaboration with the IQAC unit of the college and sponsored by Indian Council of Social Science Research, Eastern Regional Center, Kolkata. Today is 8th March, a date commemorated as the International Women's Day across the world. The theme this year is Choose to Challenge. It is believed that challenges beget change. The global theme is also Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, denoting the celebration of the tremendous effort and contribution by women in shaping a more equal future and a recovery from COVID-19 pandemic, which highlights the gap that still lingers. We feel extremely blessed and fortunate to have been able to strike a rendezvous with you all on this virtual platform to celebrate the occasion. It's a wonderful opportunity to have a constellation of academic luminaries who have promised to be with us throughout the symposium and share their observations and experiences on the team. With all your good wishes, we now begin the program in the august presence of our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Mahua Das, our revered principal, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, Professor Karuna Chanana, uh, former chair and professor, Zakir Hussain Center for Educational Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, and Dr. Nandini Bhaumik, former associate professor of HM College for Women, Dakshineshwar. The sub-theme selected for today is our role models, the ones we look up to for self-improvement, ones we inspire us to, uh, ones who inspire us to take strides and advance towards our envisioned goals. It could be a parent, friend, teacher, celebrity, anyone but uh, one who certainly captivates your imagination and makes an indelible impression on our minds. Someone we love to consider bigger, larger than us. Such role models help us in unlocking the potential and show us what's possible and what we are actually capable of. They enthuse in us the confidence to chase our dreams. Well, um, as uh, already uh, uh, said by our principal, I think there is a video that's going to follow. And soon after that, again, we will, I will be coming back and we will have a few words from our Honorable Vice Chancellor. Yes, uh, is the video coming up right now? 
Uh, just introduce our vice chancellor for a moment. It's an honor and proud moment, madam, to have you um, amongst us this evening. Uh, Dr. Das is a profound academician and an eminent personality. Her administrative acumen is also loaded with accolades and it's truly praiseworthy. A true leader, a role model for many. It is a proud privilege, madam, to have you uh, and your, uh, to uh, have your august presence amongst us despite your very busy schedule. And uh, I think a few words of encouragement, your guidance could boost our enthusiasm and give a fillip to our endeavors and engagements, be it academic or curricular or extracurricular, and help us do our best to uphold the integrity of our noble profession. So now may I request Honorable Madam to deliver the inaugural speech and set the tune of the symposium. Over to Madam. Thank you, Rupa. Very, very good evening to the most eminent academia and the erudites, the women erudites present there, Karunadi, Nandini, the most revered principal, Shoma Ghosh of the most reputed Hiralal Mazumdar Memorial College for Women. Once I was a member of the GB in this college, I'm so proud of. The seminar I want to inaugurate today itself is a very proud moment and a proud privilege for me because today is a special date for the women, the International Day, 8th March, the International Day for the Women. The women who mold the world, the women who create the world, the women who generate, and the women who perform. So it's a holistic instinct of a woman as a human being. That is the inspiration behind all creation, all creativity, all positivity that's existing in this world today. I want to thank at the very outset, uh, on the very outset, I want to thank, my special thanks goes to the sponsor, ICSSR, and the Department of Women's Studies in collaboration with IQSE cell of the college. I also offer my special thanks and congratulations to all the women, especially to the principal whose leadership has taken the college so far. The institution is really progressing, having gained the degree grade of B++ uh, in their last NAC accreditation. They has toppled our university even. That's a very, very inspiring thing. Uh, also, I want to extend my thanks to the governing body president, the members of the GB, the teaching fraternity, the faculty council, of course, of the college, the staff members, the students, and to all whoever is associated with this renowned college of our district, where our university is playing the role of mother institution, and we go hand in hand with these colleges we are surrounded with, and they are giving us all kind of support, enrichment, and I'm really grateful to these colleges, especially Shomas College, which is which I was a ex-member in the team. Now, this uh, International Women's Day is celebrated on the March 8th to observe women's success, mainly. As a woman has played her apt and most perfectionist role in the field of culture, politics, social services, health, and economic development, is also acknowledged to make people aware of women's rights, the constitutional rights women have, the privileges, and the gender equality, especially with the surge of media in the 20, uh, in this year 2021, we have seen uh, raging media there. 
and uh, really the rights and duties of the women, their privileges, etc., have come to focus even in the rural and uh, a very interior part of the country. The rural, the the women of the uh, rural interior, they know they are conscious of their rights and privileges, and they have tried to exert those rights in their daily lives. 50% and more women are now included in the list of electorate. That's a proud privilege for us. It's a proud moment for to celebrate that uh, uh, the democracy in India, being a student of political science, as Shoma also is, we now can celebrate and we are aware of our rights and duties, our equipments, uh, how we are equipped with our powers, our empowering avenues, all these we are very much aware of today than we used to be in the past. The story of why this day is celebrated, this 8th March, dates back to 1917. Uh, this for the students who are listening. The Bolshevik Revolution, 1917, October in Soviet Russia, we know there was the revolution. The leftist revolution mainly, which provided suffrage to the voting rights to Russia. And from there onwards, from that date, it became a national holiday. It was celebrated and observed as a national holiday, especially for the communist countries, the socialist countries. And thereafter, it used to be celebrated as a women's day, especially when it got recognized by the United Nations from 1977. So, the real, you know, the Women's Day was observed since 1977. But people used to say that women are the special, there's something special in the woman because they're the mother, they're the daughter, the sisters, their rights, their lives, their contributions in the society should be looked into separately and they have to be, they need to be celebrated to give them some inspiration to work more hard for their families and for their society and community whatsoever. But the real acid test was done in the year 1920, in the year 2020. As Rupa was saying, I will touch on that also, I would like to, because it was the year when, when the fatal disease of COVID-19 that struck the whole world with its fatal shock. It was a shocking, the entire year was a shocking, uh, the strike of the hit of the pandemic and uh, the all the women, they came out to become the frontliners, almost all, whoever it is, whether she's in the family member, she's, she's a mother, or she's a nurse, or she's a caregiver, they usually they uh, try to come out of their own barriers and they serve the entire community. And uh, in the year of the pandemic, COVID-19, the services to the society from household part, giving online education to their children, taking care of the health and heart of the family, and also taking care of the society at large by way of taking protections, giving instructions to the youngsters and all. Women played a very, very crucial role in the community. And that reminded, of, that reminded us of Florence Nightingale. The, one of the most, the lady with the lamb, one of the most important character in the history. So the first we, we can remember of as a role model in this period of crisis is, is obviously this lady with the lamb, the Florence Nightingale. If we look at the industrial sector, then also women's role and contribution can be known. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, is an Indian billionaire entrepreneur. She is a chairperson and managing director of Biocon Limited, biotechnology company based in Bangalore, India, and the 
former chairperson of Indian Institute of Management. Today we are talking about vaccines and all these things, which will play a very important part for our further living and fighting against this uh, COVID and uh, this corona situation. Uh, but this kind of company, biotechnology companies, Biocon has, uh, has an immensely uh, important and crucial role to play in this area of microbiology and biotechnology. Uh, that is just fabulous and fantastic. And she's an entrepreneur. On the other hand, women have been taking academic responsibilities not only for their own children, but also for millions of students all over the world. Besides their responsibilities in various works in the family, they're constantly handling their professional career. We know that we are, they're doing work from home constantly, and they're managing their uh, child. They're, they're managing the little kids at home. They have to feed them. They have to go to the kitchen to enter, to get the uh, food uh, cooked for the entire family. And then they have to attend the calls from the office they, when they're the corporate in the they are engaged in the corporate sector that I've seen for my own daughter even she is working so hard and that I can I, I can uh, just uh, match it with the current situation of the world how they uh, extremely their services are contributory to the family and to the society uh, that's again uh, that, that's again a wonderful uh, job. For the uh, for the ladies for the young girls of today the present uh, times so uh, the professional career goes hand in hand with the family responsibilities that is also one thing uh, in uh, by uh, trying to name some of our role models we remember very easily from our own country the names of uh, indira gandhi of course and kadumini ganguli as our role models. Recently, Moha Maitra, the parliamentarian, also talked about Indira Gandhi as she's been the role model of Moha from her very childhood. So uh, they are our role models from the very uh, childhood days. We can learn such great things about them. Maria Montessori, she was the woman who started the nursery school culture, which is again very important. Uh, we, we have heard about the Montreal School and kind of specialized training for the kids. Then Bethune, McLeod Bethune's name is synonymous to struggle and achievement. Both her parents were slaves. And before she was born, they used to be slaves. And they had no money to let Maria go, marry, go to school. But Maria Bethune married, uh, she became a uh, uh, one of the instances for us to follow in the academic field. Then Claire Barton is a woman who set up the American Red Cross at a time when women were hardly seen walking outside the, outside the doors of their house. Helen Keller, American educator who overcame the adversity, adversity of being blind and deaf to become one of the 20th century's leading humanitarians. We cannot forget, coming to our own land of West Bengal, we cannot forget Sister Nivedita, who was a pioneer of women's education in Bengal. Sister Nivedita, who dedicated her life for India and whom Swami Vivekananda described as a world mover. What's a, what a term, what a def definition to define a lady, a world mover, is truly a great, great role model for us. All these women are the role models for the present and next generation young girls and boys for their contribution in the society. Now, I'll conclude by saying, when we speak of this great woman as role models, a question comes automatically in our minds, who is the nearest role model for these achievers? Who, not, who nurtures them, inspires them, and guides them in their path to success, who are they? The answer is, it's their mothers. To the young girls today, it's a mother who becomes the role model and a friend who shows her the way to achievement. 
Well, I went, I want to end here with a note of salute to our mothers, the mentors, and also our teachers, who we think are the role models, our first and maiden and nearest role models in each and every stage of our lives. So that's it. I would try to end up here with my little note. Thank you so much. Uh, mm, that was truly inspiring, madam. Uh, thank you so very much for your valuable reflections on the theme and the program. We hope to hear you and uh, have you amongst us again and again in future through different programs of our college and thank be inspired so by your words of encouragement in the same way. Nohi baby, nohi shamanna nari. पूजा कोरी मोरे राखी बे उड़ दे शे नो ही नो ही ऐसा मोरे पीछे शे नो ही नो ही जो दी पार्श शे राखो मोरे शंकोते शंपोते शम्मोते दाव जो दी कोठीन ब्रोते शाहाय होते पाबे तोबे तुमी चीनी पे मोरे मुझे कोनी कहाँ था बोले रूपा तो कोनी एक तो मिश्ची बांग्ला भाषा है एक तो लाइन बोलते इच्छी कुछ है जैसे कि ना नारी देर कथा हम रा बोल ला वेब स्पो वॉल्यूम्स अबाउट दी वोमेन बट एवरी बिहाइंड एवरी वोमेन देर इज अ मैन इस जस्ट रिवर्स रिवर्स फ्रेज आई एम यूजिंग टुडे आल्सो टू एक्नोलेज द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मेन बिहाइंड ऑल सक्सेसफुल वोमेन और � एक दिक तार स्वीजी आचे नारी, एक दिक तार नॉर। इटा बोले अभी मुने कोडी तभी शॉटिंग बाला है। खूब शॉटिंग का समय दो। Can you translate this? Can you translate this? Yeah, these lines actually means this life, whatever is good, whatever is beautiful, जहाँ किचु भालो, जहाँ किचु शुंदर, whatever is good. And whatever is beautiful, एजी बने जहाँ किचु भालो, जहाँ किचु शुंदर, एक दिक तार स्रीजिया चे नारी, the one part of it is being created by woman, the other half is by the men. That is a balancing factor. Woman alone is incomplete without the partnership. Who has written this? In each and every phase of life. Who has written this novel? Obviously, Rabindranath Chakra. Rabindranath Chakra. I thought as much. Okay. Absolutely, madam. That was very uh, kind of you to recite the poem. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you. I now request. Yes. I now request our respected principal, madam, uh, Dr. Shoma Ghosh, to deliver the welcome address speech. Uh, but before that, uh, I would just love to mention that. Uh, such programs could never have been possible had she not been behind us as a huge support system. She's a great enthusiast and stupendous support to all staff of the college. Uh, may I humbly request Madam to begin uh, your speech. Over to Madam. Why don't we see her face on the screen? She should be on the yeah, screen. There she is. Now we can see her. I can't. I'm still not seeing her. No sound. Yeah, my connectivity is very poor. That's why I uh, have kept my video off. So, uh, Rupa, may I request you to play the uh, performance of the students first before I welcome because uh, students are are more uh, are, are uh, inspirers of the day. Oh, sure, madam. Okay, uh, is it ready now? Who is behind it? Please. The one who is coordinating the program for the students. Thanks to everyone. This is Aishmita Das. Please go ahead and start playing the video. 
I would like to thank my principal ma'am for giving this opportunity. So, here I begin. International Women's Day falls on the 8th of March every year. It's a day where women are recognized and appreciated for all their hard work and dedication. It's a day which is celebrated around the globe with lot of love and happiness. It's an occasion where we appreciate and show the women in our life how much their existence means to us. There are a lot of women who actively participated in politics, education, social, corporate sector, IT field, research and development and embarked their successful footprints. There are a lot of women who achieved a successful entrepreneur or as a sports person and successfully entered in space. Schools and colleges are getting more and more open to celebrating days like International Women's Day. It's a sign of progress and they are teaching the students to respect and honor women. If schools and colleges don't celebrate this day, students will not learn the importance of women. But do our celebration really a successful? By the time I will finish the speech, who knows in which part of the world a girl will lose her dignity or a woman will be a victim of domestic violence. This is the most shameful act that still humans are witnessing. In some rural areas and even in the cities, we unfortunately see or hear the incidents happening every day. Why society blame only women and why the devil move around freely even after doing wrong? Dear woman, this has to be stopped. Awaken your stubbornness. Society says that girls are more stubborn. So, why can't we make a good use of it? As for example, even after losing the battle, Rani of Jhansi became an inspiring symbol to the world. Even the British officials were stunned by the courage and stubbornness of Rani Lakshmi Bai. Had Kadambini Ganguly not had the willpower, she could never have become the Asia's first female doctor. There are many examples of women. If I start saying, then my speech will be much longer. Celebrating Women's Day is not really worthwhile until the number of injustice against girls in the world decreases. We have to fight to reduce this number. So the question arises, what should we do to increase our courage? Generally, women do not take care of herself. And our great example is our mother as she works from day to night. Girls, it's your life. Take care of yourself. Do exercise or yoga to rejuvenate yourself. Try to learn self-defense to protect yourself. It is as important as eating and sleeping. It's your life. Raise your voice if you see any injustice. Learn to love yourself. No matter how do you look or what's your skin tone have. Make yourself so worthy that everyone would feel proud of you. With this, I ended my speech. Thank you. That was really an impressive uh, speech. I don't want to talk about it.
দেখো আলো এ আলো আকাশ দেখো আকাশ আরায় ভরা দেখো যাওয়ার পথের পাশে ছুটে হাওয়া পাগল পারা এত আনন্দ আয়োজন সবই বৃথা আমায় ছাড়া ভরে থাকু আমার মুঠ দুই চোখে থাকু ধারা এলো সময় রাজার মত হলো কাজের হিসেব সারা sister 
and most humble and submissive human being and service provider and that too if we give 24/7 unconditional service men and women own the world as a mutual possession rightly pointed out by our honorable vice chancellor but the challenge is that the women need to shoulder the responsibility of failures so choose to fight together for gender parity and women's rights our challenge at home and our workplace are allots for us for being stronger to love more to cross the hurdles to try tirelessly and to persevere students and friends let your unique awesomeness and positive energy inspire confidence in others at your home and profession you must choose to bring sunshine success is the sum of small efforts to be taken every day and in every moments of your lives remember that despite several challenges you have to uh, potentially try to do better as you are braver than you believe stronger than you appear and smarter than you think celebration of a day or a week just symbolizes a grand beginning in 1908 15000 women workers marched in new york city for human working hours better pay and the right to vote the socialist party of america declared the first national women's day in 1909 the day was said to have first celebration in 1911 in austria denmark germany and switzerland still we are struggling with our data with information of our oppression and suppression we started our journey so early to fight against gender disparity till we are facing the challenge to give birth to healthy babies to or give priority to our health issues to fight for our rights to have equal access to education to have the right to break the glass ceilings to get into the professional world a study has shown that still 54.26% mothers in west bengal are anemic 54.8 Six percent are obese due to improper diet. Still, we don't know that giving birth to a girl child is not our fault, and due to this ignorance, we, the women, are blamed. Everyone knows that we are here for our mothers. Still, women are to fight against the challenges. posed against their dignity of life reservation in higher parliamentary bodies in india is still a matter of choice to be done by our male partners right from deficiency in iron or folic acid or vitamins or minerals up to the deficiency in getting our rights the everything depends on us the entire world is dependent on women for its existence but the women must uh, must learn to depend on their own selves must fight for their constitutional rights there is still gender divide domestic violence female feminicide the challenges to have challenges are to have to choose to fight against all these odds it is often a challenge to our own womanhood and often these challenges come from women themselves 
due to patriarchal form of socialization. Therefore, we have to choose to challenge these odds again and again. Our fight is not against our male counterparts in the society, but against patriarchal biases, so that this celebration way of women, Women's Day does not remain confined into discussing about our deprivations and oppressions in the coming years. We are here to glorify our human existence, not to express our pain and grief. From ninth five-year plan, which was dedicated to women's empowerment, we are st still struggling to get our basic rights to security, dignity, subsistence, and humanhood. Who else can empower us except we, the women, the mothers, the teachers, the wives, and the executing professionals? It is therefore the ultimate moment to choose to challenge. Before I welcome our dignitaries, I'd like to dedicate my welcome address to my mother, my mentor, for whom I am what I am. I dedicate my day to the young lady, my daughter, who has made my life fragrant and smooth. I'd like to dedicate the success of my career to all my colleagues and well-wishers both male and female, who has helped me to run the car so effectively. I dedicate my success of my life and career to all my teachers. As a teacher, I'd like to thank all my students, many of whom has always made me proud. With regards and gratitude, I'd like to dedicate the day and all my success to my mentors like Armaiti Desai, Professor Karuna Chanana, Sramati Padma Ramachandran, Professor Shorbani Choudhury, Professor Helen Joseph, Professor Mohua Das, Professor Mo mm -hmm. Mudumita Shen, and to all others who perhaps uh, could not be mentioned right now. Let's start the con conclave to choose to challenge Challenge what? Challenge mal malnutrition? Challenge underweight? Challenge ignorance? Challenge every sort of blockages in the pipelines. We now must stand up to assert our rights, right to fight for a dignified humanhood for our enlightenment. With that, before I hand over the torch to the organizers to celebrate this one week's International Women's Day sponsored by ICSSR. I must convey my gratitude to Professor Dr. Shoibal Kaur, Director, Eastern Region of ICSSR, who has given us the consent to organize this webinar under their ban banner. I'd like to express my gratitude to Dr. Mohua Das. Honorable Vice Chancellor, who, despite her busy schedule, has paired a wonderful moment with us and shared valuable thoughts. I'd like to express my gratitude to Professor Karuna Chanana, former Chair Professor, Jakir Hussain Center for Educational Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University. My thanks are due to our former associate professor, Dr. Nondini Bhomi, who is not only an academician, but as well a noteworthy performer and playwright. All of you are our role models who inspire us to choose to challenge. I must convey my thanks to my IQC coordinator, Rupa, Dr. Rupa Sen, belonging to the same discipline, political science. Barsar, Dr. Lipika Molli, Dr. Shonali Mukherjee, 
প্রফেসর দিবাকান্ত ঝা শ্রী প্রদীপ্ত মুখার্জি ডক্টর প্রীথা কুন্ডু ডক্টর চন্দ্রাবলী দত্ত ডক্টর সুজাতা মুখোপাধ্যায় অ্যান্ড মোস্ট ইম্পর্টেন্টলি শ্রীমতী আত্রি ভট্টাচার্য অ্যান্ড শ্রীমতী পূজা দাস অ্যালং উইথ শ্রী জয়দেব ভট্টাচার্য অ্যান্ড শুভঙ্কর মালাকার ফর অ্যাসিস্টিং মি টু অর্গানাইজ দিস ওয়েবিনার অর কনক্লিভ সাকসেসফুলি আই মাস্ট কনভি মাই থ্যাংকস অ্যান্ড গ্র্যাটিটিউড to the president of governing body and all the members of governing body who has always stood beside me in all my endeavors with that brief note i'd like to request dr rupa sen to continue the session of the day thank you thank you ma'am uh, it was really very uh, an impressive uh, piece of speech delivered by you and uh, very well said uh, that uh, men and women are complementary to one another nari jodi ardhek akash hoy tale purush kintu baki akash patriarchy protibandhakata ache thiki tobe badha ache bolei kintu ei je driro hote bolishtho howar je driro howar ba boli bolishtho howar sujog kintu amra pacchi we can embolden ourselves make ourselves strong because uh, you know strong women are made by storms they walk through so that is always there and uh, all this women's liberation movement etc egulo te there is mane dondo ba conflict jodi amra shei bhabe na dekhi tahole pore kintu jeta korte hobe just a little change and what is that change uh, the, uh, that the perspectives must be changed age the perspectives of seeing and having reservations about women and what they are capable and what they are not of, uh, capable of is all decided and women silently just keep on accepting this perspective must change women should begin talking speaking uh, questioning only then they will be able to find a path anyway uh, yes uh, uh, so uh we move on uh, and our uh, we are honored and uh, we are delighted to have uh, professor karuna chanana with us uh, this evening uh, former chair and professor of zakir hussain center for educational studies jnu and erudite scholar in her own right madam may i request you to deliver the keynote address for the program to proceed over to madam thank you <clears throat> i must thank uh, shoma ghosh for this invitation and also i am with grant that uh, mohua das is also there because i am going to talk of the program that we all enjoyed and participated in and i consider both of them a product of that program now atrey can you open the uh my powerpoint is atrey around i see otherwise i'll have to open it whether you can see it or not i don't know soma what yeah, is atrey yeah atrey is presented okay. it is it is on the screen a screen atrey is doing that you have so far the presentations have pre provided a very mixed picture mohua ইয়া then the other two speakers gave you a very mixed picture that's what a woman's life is very complex and difficult to understand you have the positives you have the negatives now i am starting with something which is not very positive you see on first spot in the times of india newspaper headline in the supreme court a rapist is asked if he would marry the survivor This should have been an escape for him from punishment. 
and a year earlier the attorney general had suggested to the sc to gender sensitize the judiciary in a case in madhya pradesh where the court had asked a rapist to tie a rakhi to the survivor so now if a man rapes a woman the solution is marry her or tie a rakhi if this is the understanding of the judiciary about rape the status of the survivor and the solution to rape cases you are likely to see a rise in rapes and what kind of justice do you expect from the courts let me give you another example of the head of a university next on 14th september in 2018 now to doi headline was the bhopal university was introducing a course on how to prepare ideal brides you know we heard about that in the victorian england the vc said after all it is the responsibility of women to keep families intact and it is for their empowerment is this what you think education is for and is it what empowerment is is it how you envisage your role as an educated woman this thinking emerges from the socialization and the stereotype notion of the feminine and masculine roles about which i'll be talking later next i am now coming to the very basics i think uh, students would should understand the difference between sex and gender and uh, sex is almost universally the most basic category and refers only to biological and physiological differences and characteristics while gender refers to socially assigned roles behavior patterns attributes tasks and activities that are considered appropriate for girls and boys and this they get through socialization at home to the family therefore gender is a social construction women bear children therefore they must rear children thus while sex differences are universal male and female gender differences are referred to as feminine and masculine and they vary from society to society next now these i have already said now these differences from the home are extended into the society which encompass the world of work educational institutions all of our lives now coming to the schools they also reinforce the roles of girls and boys which are internalized at home gender thus basically denotes social differences and attributes of women and men as feminine and masculine now transgender has also been added as a third gender i will not be able to speak on that because there is not much written on what i am going to say next now feminist research pointed out that boys and girls when they they are socialized so differently that when they enter schools they are not students they are already boys and girls they are not children and though these differences encompass all spheres of life i am going to refer and find myself to three aspects of higher education namely link between gender and subject representation of women as faculty and women in top jobs or as leaders in higher education next now women in higher education what is it we know that the numbers of women are increasing in the higher education they are becoming enrollments are increasing at all levels of education why is it is it because of, this is because of the changing aspiration of parents and daughters who are now persuading them encouraging them to chart new paths especially in the metros where young educated women from upper and upper middle classes are aspiring to work but additionally those from the lower and middle strata are also working to support families however social there is the other side to it social considerations of a high value of the prospective bride in the marriage market can also not be ruled out next
Now, there are also wider societal changes which have impacted the enrollment of women in higher education. Women are also expecting a lot from education and they have somewhat reversed traditional gender inequality in educational participation. The higher education sector has also rapidly expanded, especially with the expansion of the private sector. As the number of women students has increased, so has the, those of the women. But we don't know whether it's in the private sector or in the government sector. Another factor is girls are doing far better for years and years in school board exams. Next. Now, but what is important is that they are doing well. That means achievement and enrollment numbers. Does it make things simpler for them? No. They hide the complexities which determine the educational careers of women as students and as teachers or as faculty and as academic leaders. And gender remains a very, very strong determinant of many educational inequities. Women are less represented in such subjects, specializations and in research. In fact, subjects are known as feminine subjects and masculine subjects. Women are mostly concentrated in social sciences, arts, and humanities, and not in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM subjects as they are known. And this has become a matter of concern for the government also. Next. You know, this year, out of 43,204 candidates who cleared the JEP, only 6,707 or 15% were women. No one was among the top 10. The highest was the 17th rank. Now, the IIT board has been aware of this, and so it has been decided that 14% of women's proportion must be in all IITs. And 20 per by 2018 and 20% in 2020. Now, I'm not going to say anything. The only thing is we don't know because of COVID. Has anything changed? Have the students' numbers increased? What happened in, two, in next? I think I'll leave out these statistics. Now, this is happening in spite of better results in school designs. They don't go into professional subjects, which will give them better careers and better salaries. Yet the social role of women, marriage as imperative at certain age and dowry, within the patriarchal framework are intervening variables, which decide which subject choices students, girls will make. Therefore, very few women are sent for coaching classes. This brings me to the link between gender and subject. The I've already said that they are labeled as men, feminine and masculine, according to the proportion of men and women in them. Next. Now, Subjects are not chosen by merely on objective factors such as merit, employability, or economic terms, as men do. But it is a result of complex set of factors. There is a divide between male-dominated fields of engineering. You can see the proportions: 28%, agriculture 25%, law 33, veterinary science 30, and the feminine subjects. Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, 53%. Now, sciences, this science is not a professional science. These are pure sciences like physics, chemistry in the universities, which are no longer a priority for men. Therefore, women's portion is now substantial, 46.7%. The first four are still masculine disciplines. Next. Now, commerce and management. They stand at the cusp of the feminine and masculine subjects, with 44% in commerce and 36.6% in management. Management is a relatively new discipline. Now, medicine, 60.6%, 60 
has never been a masculine subject right from the beginning of Western education in India. Because of tradition, women patients had to be treated by women doctors. Therefore, more women could join women's colleges. Lady Harding Medical College have forgotten. Sometime in the early 20th century, it was set up in Delhi. So I always say that this is an interplay of tradition and modernity. Because of the tradition of Parda, women got modern medical education. The only thing, of course, we also have to ask is how many really become a doctor or follow a career? Now, teaching, again, in sync with the social role, which is considered the best occupation for women, so they are 61.6%. But the question is, what is their proportion as teachers? They are highest at the elementary education and lowest in the secondary education. Next. Now, even if their enrollment is increasing in UG courses and or commerce and management, they are not taking competitive tests in equal proportions to men. So therefore, high enrollments in gender parity in education, in spite of that, they are still more likely to participate in grad and graduate from humanities, social sciences, and education, when, while men are more likely to graduate from computer sciences, physical sciences, and engineering. And we must note, choice of subjects limits career options for girls, for women. Next. Next. And when they talk the hitherto male-dominated fields, it becomes male. In India, three women talked, started accountancy examination in 2011, and the past percentage was higher than that of men. In 2010, the top two candidates and five out of the first 25 in IAS examination were women, and these all were news in the headline news in the Times of India. Now, two recent headlines in terms of admissions. In Bangalore edition of POI, 30% of women in IIMD's new batch, actually this is a post-graduate course for a working uh, professionals, which has been introduced. So there are 30 women who have come back with their qualifications. And surprisingly, 52% women were admitted in the IIM course code graduate class, which is something very surprising. Now, these women are harbingers of change, no doubt. Yet, they remain a minority. And they are exceptions. Now, what is their proportion as among women faculty? Next. Are they next? Ma'am, it has changed. Are, no, it has Okay. No? Oh. All right, sorry. Yeah, so women constitute almost 42% of teachers. And most of them, majority of them are, the highest proportion are assistant professors, 42%, associate 37%, professors about 27%. Demonstrated tutor roles, the junior most, they are 65%. Even in temporary, they are about 50%. Next. Hmm. You know, in the corporate sector, the government has made it mandatory for quite some time that 30% of the women must be in their roles. But if there is no such regulation for the higher education sector. But some recent news that 11 shares will be created and named after women scientists and social scientists and will also be filled by women. Then, the Department of Science and Technology and British Council are going to rank 20 technology institutions on parameters of gender parity. This is only a pilot project. Let's see whether it was started or not because of COVID. Next. Now, 
Another thing that has happened to help women is post-COVID pandemic work from home has become another enabler for married working women to return to work in the corporate sector. In today's newspaper, there is a very good news by the a research agency that how women are returning to work because they have gone away due to career break, child care, husband being posted in a different city, and their proportion numbers are high. But no such research is being taken, undertaken on higher education. Next. Now, I've talked about students, subject choice, faculty. Now, other area of interest is higher education and the leadership. Feminists have done a lot of research to show that women are a very, very small minority in top jobs. And they have come to the conclusion that universities are male-dominated organizations and social constructions. They are gender blind and not gender neutral. Therefore, the majority of the senior positions in the universities are held by men, while women are concentrated at lower numbers. Most of the decision-making positions, membership of executive, academic, and administrative committees are held by men. Next. So, you know, those of us who have done some training and orientation for women, or who are familiar with higher education, we assert that it's not that there are not enough women in higher education to become leaders. Yet, they are clustered at the lower levels because they are not in positions of power. They are not in position in selection committees, recruitment committees, in which they can select other women. Further, women do not move on to higher research or scientific careers, faculty positions and leadership roles. And even if they get into the universities, they do not get into top jobs. So far, no woman has been appointed director of the IIT since 1961. Now, an NIT director, Fiji, I must say that she is a product of a UGC program that I'm going to talk about, which try to increase the number of women in higher education management. First director of IIM Sirmor in Puja, she was also the product of our program, like Nova and Shona. Next. But again, I want to say that I'm not saying that men in top positions are not gender sensitive or pro-gender. There are quite a few who are. And women who are in top jobs are also exceptions. But they get them, they are, we divide them into four categories. Those who deserve the job, those who get into the, fit into the male model of leadership role. You mean aggressive, assertive, competitive. And the third are passive rubber stamp, the token. But the fourth category of women leaders like Shoma Ghosh, who are in women-only institutions, I think are the best examples, where they are not under any pressure to follow the male style of leadership. But altogether, they are a small minority. Next. Now, several explanations have been offered for why women move off slowly. Because when they receive PhD, that's the time parents put pressure, get married. Finish PhD if you can't get married. So they opt out of society pressure of settling down. Settling down for daughters means get married. Settling down for sons means take up a job. Which has a different meaning for both. Now, research has also uh, Identify the enables, family, uh, the factors which help women move up. Next. Now, on the basis of the factors that we were familiar with, we designed the program under the University France Commission when Dr. R. M. I. D. Desai was the chairperson. Some of us then got together and decided that we will run a program. This was, of course, being done by the Commonwealth Secretary in Africa. 
we modified it for India. And this was known as the capacity building of women managers in higher education. So far, from 2003 to 2013, we did 140 workshops, trained about 7,500 women. Two levels of workshops, SAM, sensitization, awareness and motivation, training of trainers. I'm only going to talk about SAM. Now, SAM program helped women to identify barriers to the success of academic women. Then, next. And also in gaining leadership roles, also in empowering them by enhancing their self confidence. They enabled it, it enabled them to aspire to and seek out positions of leadership. It's interesting, even during the program, the participants would get up. Someone said, oh, I never thought I could become a principal. Now I'm going to improve my CV. This NIT Tuchi director, he was very happy being a, an academic, introducing new programs and in computer engineering and all that. And she was being bypassed for the deanship. After Sam, she went back to the university and the network and talk to people and made sure that she was not bypassed the next time around and got the leadership. Then she has become an NIT director and she's doing several other things. So they could they were asked to look at gendered power structures within the universities and the in negative impact on their careers. Women also identified the relative lack of career success was not due to their own failings or limitations, but because of structural inequalities. But they also recognized that they were quite happy just being academics. But that was not enough. They should get into administration. You have seen how many. In Bengal, I'm pleased that, you know, Mahua is one BC. Shonchari Mukherjee has just become the vice chancellor of a West Dinajpur University. Shomita Sen from Jadavpur was the first vice chancellor of a university somewhere in Diamond Harbor. Miss Stats, a national institution, the director is a product of SAM. The cultural secretary and embassy of Mexico is also a product of SAM. And they all recognize the contribution that this program made. Next. Now, what is it that we expect? How? I saw. I must then finish it. I started, I've taken 25 minutes. What I'll do is that higher participation rates of women in higher education and changing subject choices indicate that family is no longer stopping them from going for higher education. It is their push factors. And yet, it is the systemic barriers and also the choice of subjects and I think colleges and universities have to help provide a long-term vision, build self-confidence and enhance the capacity of women students and teachers to be the change agents. They should provide counseling and support. I'll end up by giving the example of a women's college and the principal. That was 10-15 years ago when the IT sector was opening up. What she did was she noticed that students from this college, they would miss classes, they would go early. Then they, she found out that they were taking career-oriented courses in the private sector. She brought all those courses as part-time courses after college and charged them very low fees, but asked other students from other colleges also to come and join that and charge them a little more fee. So that way she could help the students who were looking for jobs, occupations, and skills. And I think colleges can do that, universities can do that, and that will be something. The rest of it I'll leave out because I've already <coughs> done more than, taken more time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, madam, for your very uh, informative uh, speech. Uh, your presentation was uh, 
uh, a window to women's position in the field of education and uh, how much we need to put on and uh, drive our efforts towards uh, improving ourselves. Uh, that was really thought-provoking, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are already running short of time. So without further delay, uh, you, let me go, uh, move on. And uh, let me say it gives me immense pleasure to announce the name of Doc Dr. Nandini Bhaumik, former associate professor of this college, a scholar, a popular teacher, noted stage artist, performer, and an emerging priestess in West Bengal, uh, all in her own right. She is the guest speaker of our program today, and she will be delivering her observations and experiences on our role models. Welcome home, Dr. Bhomik. No, no, Nandini D. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, <laughs> I request you, Nandini D, to begin. <laughs> yeah, I first of all express my gratitude to Madam Principal. I must apologize for taking more time. Uh, um, thank you so much for inviting me in this uh, beautiful webinar. And uh, first of all, uh, I learned a lot from my former speakers. Can you hear me properly, Rupa? Yes, yes I can. Yes, I can. Okay, okay, yes, okay. Distinctly, uh, yeah, audible. Okay. Uh, mm, thank you, everybody. It's really an emotional moment for me <laughs> for having the opportunity to speak in front of my uh, college uh, people, my esteemed colleagues. Uh, my friends, my students, I love you, love you, adore you, all of you. Uh, so uh, my presentation today, Rupa, I will uh, speak bilingually because uh, I have quite a few uh, quotations in Bengali. Jigulo amar kaj jibhabe ami kori sheta bojhate shubhida hobe. Actually, uh, yes, uh, I have emerged as a priestess. Um, and uh, more I should say that it's not just uh, priesthood activities. I have uh, been successful to take it uh, to a priesthood art, I should say. Uh, it is like an art where we combine hymns, the, the meanings, the significance of all rituals, and of course, Rabindranath Tagore. He is always with us. Uh, we Bengalis cannot do anything without him. So we uh, imbibe um, suitable Tagore songs uh, just because uh, Tagore songs have such diction and such words and such philosophy that is almost identical with the Vedas and the Upanishads. So we take his help. And uh, the whole thing is, uh, the whole presentation is uh, musical and spiritual and very entertaining. It is short and crisp. That is the method. But the result we get is a lot of penetration in the minds of the youth who have uh, really got away. They are not really interested in our ritualistic performances. In wedding ceremonies, they prefer to have the pomp and grandeur and just a registration, that's all. They don't want to get into the intricacies of the ritualistic performances. And we have uh, been successful. These young people, this generation, have really got interested in our performance because they can understand what they are saying. Uh, they can be very comfortable because all that we do, we have a focus of no discrimination, gender-wise, caste-wise, creed-wise, religion-wise. We are all human beings. And humanity is our religion. And I'm very much sure that any religion will speak of the same thing. Love people, respect people. That is all that we have say, 
we have to say in all the religious practices that we do. Now, what is religion? Ektu Banglai Boli. The definition of religion in Sanskrit is Ahimsa Satya Masteyang Shalchan Sangyama Mevacha Etat Samasikam Prokta Dharmasya Panchalakshanam. So, what is dharma? We, we have an idea that dharma is religion. No. Let us see what dharma is. Dharma is ahimsa. Do unto others as you wish to be done. Tumar proti aporer acharan jamunti chao, tumi tamun acharan karo aporeshange. That is ahimsa. Next is satya, truth. Truth is what? Karjo mon bakko ak koro. What you are thinking, what you are saying, and what you are doing must be on the same line. No disparity. Asteya. What is asteya? Ma gridha kasya svedhanam. Don't grab others' wealth. Onner jinish onnay bhave grohon porona. Shaucha, purity. Antar ebang bahir shuchi. You have to be pure from outside and also from inside. How can you be pure from inside? Shubho chinta mongol buddhi. Good thoughts. Good, good intellect. And sangyama, that is self-control. Changjam. So where are you finding religion here? This is dharma, what is said in our ancient scriptures. Now I shall go for some quotations. Dr. Mohanamrata Brahmachari dharma shamandhi kub bhalo kotha bole chen. Bole chen dharmer prati shabdu religion noy. Kono kichur dharma holo tar prakriti ba inherent quality. Aguner dharma dahun kora. Joler dharma trishna nebaran kora. Manusher dharma holo amon kichu gun ja na thakle manuske manus bola jabena. Poshu paki tar dharma niye janmai kintu manuske tar dharma arjun kutte hai. We have to acquire our dharma and become a true human being. That is what is needed. Buddha our great Gautam Buddha. He was treading on the path, going from household to household for his arms, begging for his food. And a lady was cooking for her uh, meals for her family. And Buddha went and asked some arms, some food. And this lady was very annoyed. She insulted Gautam Buddha and said, to do some work and earn his living. She said very wrong words, very harsh words to him. At last, Buddha didn't say anything. He stood there and asked for his arms. At last, the lady came out, gave something to Buddha, very annoyed, and went away. Buddha called, him, called her and said, what if I return these things to you again? She said, okay, I'll take it back. No problem. And Buddha said, okay, you have given me arms in my hand and you have given me many harsh words too. Can you take back those words? She was transformed. She understood what she had told was absolutely wrong. She should have loved and respected this man. This is earning humanity. You have to earn your humanity. You have to become a human being. That is very essential. In the event of celebration of Women's Day, all of us have to remember this. We have to earn our humanity. We ladies also have to become true human beings so that we can prove something to the world. 
পরমাংশ হরিহরানন্দ মহারাজ তিনি বলেছেন হিন্দু ধর্মের প্রাচীন নাম হচ্ছে সনাতন ধর্ম সনাতন অর্থাৎ চিরকালের চিরকালের ধর্ম হচ্ছে মানব ধর্ম সেখানে তাই কোনো ধর্মান্তরকরণ নেই কনভার্ট হওয়া যায় না মানুষের মধ্যে মনুষ্যত্ব থাকাটাই ধর্ম এবং গুরু প্রদর্শিত পথে অনেক রকম ভাবে ঈশ্বর সাধনা করতে হয় সেইগুলিকে আসলে মতবাদ বলা হয় সেগুলো আলাদা ধর্ম নয় ওকে অ্যান্ড আশোকা অলসো উই নো হোয়াট হি সেট অ্যাবাউট হিজ ধাম্মা হিজ ধাম্মা ওয়াজ টেক কেয়ার অফ ইউর প্যারেন্টস take care of the aged people take care of the seniors be very kind to your servants give donate to your family members to your friends and everybody be very kind and compassionate towards all that is our religion that is humanity and through my priesthood i always say that everybody has to be a good human being in order to achieve anything honik shammer bani bollam all these are idealistic yes this is our target this is our focus but in practice ki hocche amader ekhane when a girl is born to us a little baby child is a girl in my family I have a fear that when she will grow up I have to protect her until she is an adult I have to teach her household activities she has to know how to cook she has to know how to perform all household jobs and odd jobs and she has to compromise with whatever is going on in the society and in her house and she should not protest much yes she should be patient this in practice we are facing each and every day so i would request the mothers the grandparents the fathers first of all when a child is about to be born in your family please do not always pray for a male child which is still happening around us everybody is welcome either a boy child or a girl child if you have a boy child your responsibility is much more nowadays because you have to groom him to be equal to a girl also he has to learn to cook he has to learn to do odd jobs for the family he has to learn to be efficient in every household job yes the other way around grandparents please do not hope always for a grandchild a male one no you should be very happy with a granddaughter also nati hobe nati hobe ei bhebe thakuma didima dadu didara please pagol hoben na nati chan nati niyo bhalo thakun seta khub dorkar don't instruct a girl child with uh, that she has to play a particular toy she has to uh, behave in a particular way she has to dress up with a particular way no treat every child as a human being when the child is being groomed that is the basis of the society shekhane amra vibhajan kori discrimination is done at that stage we offer particular types of toys to the children particular colors are even allotted to the children even uh, particular colors colored dresses are made in the cloth clothing shops yes discrimination has begun from the root it is our job it is the job of our mothers 
it is the job of us teachers to come out from this. We have to show a new world to our children. That will help. That will help a woman to grow up with full confidence. And that will help a man also to know that he has to support the woman in everything who is by his side, right? Amar pauru hitte, konna kakuno porir dhon noy. A girl can never be a property to others. So, no question of kanyadan. She cannot be given away. Kone dakha alote amra ar kone dekhi na. Right. It is very despising and very insulting to a girl. The boy's family comes over and over again to a girl's family just to judge the shade of her skin color, the amount of hair she has, whether she can sing or not. So this is very insulting. Tarpori. There is no point in returning the debt of rice that a girl has eaten before her marriage from her father. No point in doing that. Egulo theke biroto thakben please. Egulo ar korar dorkar nei. Shidur porar por lajja bostro dio na bhai. Shidur porar jonne kono meke lojjito hote hobe na. Be a korar jonne kono meke lojjito hote hobe na. Proudly be a koro. You should boast of it. Eje lojja meder bhushan Narid Bhushan Holo Lodja, Etati Amar Probo Laputti, Atu Lodja Pabu Keno, Dorka Neto. I got to Shikar Alo Eshegache, all of us are educated. Hmm. Porashuno Korobeshikole. Not only syllabus a ki atse sheta shudunoi, out of syllabus we have to study. We have to study the scriptures. We have to study what is written in different religion other than your own religion. Everybody speaks of human welfare and love and respect for all human beings and living beings. Be indebted to nature. Don't make your life complicated with uh, very intricacies of rituals. Vidhi nished. Aishab Jyoti Lata niye nije ke chhoto kore rekho na. Paayar shekol khule dao. Mone chanla khule dao. Khawata ashte dao. Dekbe. Mon chanla khule dee na. Batash lagu khurane. Shital shital parer gatha shud gunthu kane. Bhalo lagbe. You feel fresh. You feel a positive vibe. You feel the energy to fight. Our goddess Durga always fights. We don't want to be Dasha Bhuja. We don't, don't want to do multitasking all the time. We are tired of it. We will do whatever we want. Yes? Tuto hak diye kaj korbo bhai. Baki akta hak amra chai na. Amra shamane shate, shaman marjada shate, odhikare shate, bhalo beshe, nije kaj ta korbo. Dasha Bhuja hote chai na. Lorai kore kore to amra klanto hai gachi. Ar kato lorai korbo amra? We are never impure in our monthly periods time. Never. That is a very natural process and that is a celebration of womanhood. You needn't be feeling that you are impure on those days. Of course you can perform all puja activities. Bheto theke shudta hao. Bheto theke antar theke we go through a lot of uh, rules and regulations regarding widowhood also. 
সীমিত হয়েছে অনেক কেটে গেছে কিন্তু বাট স্টিল ইট ইস দেয়ার ইউর সোশ্যাল স্টেটাস ক্যান নট ডিপেন্ড অন দ্য ফ্যাক্ট উইথ ইউর হাজবেন্ড ইজ লিভিং অর নট আজকে যখন বিয়েতে কোন বরণ হচ্ছে যখন হলুদ কোটা হচ্ছে তখন শুধু এও স্ত্রীদের ডাক করবে কেন তখন সকলের ডাক করবে যাদের যাদের এই মেয়েটি ভালোবাসে বা ছেলেটি ভালোবাসে যারা বিয়ে করছে তখন কি আমরা ভাবতে বসবো যে ওই মহিলার স্বামী বেঁচে আছেন কি না দ্যাট ইস রিডিকুলাস আমার শোক আমার স্বামী যদি না থাকেন সেটা আমার ব্যক্তিগত শোক বাট তার জন্য আমার পোশাক আমার খাওয়া দাওয়া আমার সোশ্যাল অ্যাকসেপ্টেন্স বদলে যাবে একদম শেষে বলি মেয়েরা তোমরা কিন্তু নিজেরাই নিজেদের শত্রুতা করো ধর্ম ভয় নিয়ে পাছে কি হবে যদি কিছু খারাপ হয় এই যদি হয়তো কেন এই প্রশ্নগুলো মনের মধ্যে এত এনো না আস্ক ইউর সেলফ পড়াশোনা করো আরো জানো এনলাইটেন ইউর সেলফ নিজের আলো নিজেই জালো কাটাও বিভেদ ঘোচাও কালো দ্যাট ইজ ইউর রেসপন্সিবিলিটি এইটুকু বললাম টু সেলিব্রেট দি ওকেশন অফ ইন্টারন্যাশনাল উইমেন্স ডে লাভ ইউ অল Thank you, Nandini Di. You are brilliant as usual, with the hope of hearing you again in future. Uh, thank you once again. But before you leave, uh, I guess there will be questions coming up. And uh, Srimoti Shrabuni Mojumdar, Faculty Department of... Yes, I can't hear you. Uh, yes, thank you, Rupa Di. uh the uh, enthralling session must have risen a lot of thought uh now the session is open for interactions please feel free to come up with questions thoughts or any of your observations if there are any questions lots of beautiful messages are coming up yes mom be ready janu aaj ke ek jagah bolte giyechilam they are working uh, with women uh, ora shonirbhor korche shei meeder i'm shon- wondering if i can leave oh yes hello soma may i leave soma ache rupa oh, ah. I think I would like to leave now. I don't see any question. Uh, yes, thank you so much for being with us. Okay. And Nandini, okay. it was so inspiring. Professor Chanana, okay. we okay. Uh, need to rejuvenate our SAM-like workshops again. Yes, thank I you so that. much. Okay, welcome. Nandinidhi would like to hear you again and again. So inspiring. Anna, I know that I will talk to you about this. I have been talking to you about this. I am very proud of this non-profit organization. I am very proud of this. I am very proud of this. Everyone in my family is very proud of this. Why do you know that? 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 just imagine the amount of work people are doing okay am i audible ha ha sunte pacchi bol rupa ha so we have already arrived at the fag end of the program for today uh ya devi sarva bhuteshu শক্তি রূপেণ সংস্থিত নমস্তৈ 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 নমো নম 
reverberation of this mantra awakens a kind of force power shakti normally represented as uh, god is durga the epitome of power the power we worship and celebrate with utmost exuberance today on this occasion let us resolve to awaken the lesser durgas that abound in the vicinity arm them with weapons of education courage rationality and charge them with positivity inspire them to foster their long awaited desires let us help them plan to win to prepare to win and be focused to win a little guidance so perhaps could kindle the lamp in your in your in absolute darkness it could be the beacon of hope for many most of them generally they remain yoked to conventional lines all their lives but what is important is to imbibe in young minds to create to innovate to do something new not just remain goal oriented but give importance to the process too because it is the intensity of experience is what matters so uh let's resolve let's choose to challenge let's choose to break the glass ceilings let's choose to break our silence let's break the walls of gender biasness break the shackles of inequality and create our own story and breathe the air of liberty well i am extremely honored to be able to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the college it's a proud moment and an opportunity to thank all who have been part of the symposium on the first day uh, first and foremost my sincere thanks goes out to the honorable vice chancellor for being with us and sharing her invaluable views this evening my heartfelt thanks to professor karuna chanana for her wonderful thoughts which reflected throughout her keynote address i thank uh dr nandini bhomik for a brilliant presentation and i thank all others madam we shall remember your words as guiding stars that shall guide us all our lives thank you and as i was saying nandini b it was really intriguing and inspiring <laughs> i thank our principal ma'am without whose support and tireless zeal the program could never take to its wings i also take the opportunity to thank sri pradeep mukherjee coordinator of webinar organizing committee and all others associated with the committee i thank each and every member of the iqac team the technical coordinators simoti puja das and atray bhattacharya and the technical assistants sri jayadev bhattacharya and shubhankar malakar and all others who have really really worked hard and put their hearts together to make the program a success in fine i must not forget i must thank all the participants whose presence has made the program actually fruitful hope you all enjoyed the program today please be with us and join us tomorrow same time same way good night